Everyone seems to be hiding a secret. Perhaps I can start with that mysterious novelist and gather some useful information. Strange. Mr. Orpheus isn't here. It's cold. It should have been extinguished a long time ago. It's fixed to the fireplace. Huh. It's moving. Nothing happened. Did Mr. Orpheus never come here and go out the back door instead? Then... Maybe I should have a chat with Mrs. Plinius instead. Strange. Mrs. Plinius is gone too. Someone placed some beehive boxes here. Was it Mrs. Plinius? These bees look pretty hostile. I better keep my distance from them. The remains seem to be of the same species as the bees in the boxes. Besides through the dining room, there should be no other way to leave this place. So, did Mrs. Plinius leave while I went to the living room? Then... Maybe I can have a chat with Mr. Kreeberg. Was that Mr. Kreeberg? Where is he going? <laughs> I lost him. I must find a place with a better view. There's a lookout. I should be able to see the entire race course from up there. I need something to climb up there. Maybe I can find something useful in the stable over there.
found it. This should help me get up there. Great. It seems to still be working. The deserted stands are in disarray, and many things have been damaged. Three mounds, two of which have cornflowers in bloom on them. Found him. I need to get a closer look. He seems to be looking for something. I need to get an even closer look. He seems to be looking for something. I need to get an even closer look. Who's there? <sighs> Mr. Orpheus! It would seem none of us are following the rules. The spirit of exploration isn't a terrible quality. However, exploring aimlessly is usually futile. Isn't that so, Mr. Kreberg from Austria? What do you know? I investigated all the assets of this manor before coming here. Including this race course that is named after your family. And the legend of the cornflowers. Oh, and Blue Hope. Please, do tell. In its prime, the Kreberg Racecourse was a renowned racecourse where even its popular horses were quite famous. The most famous among them was the racehorse that came to be known as the White Steed of Death. During every race, its rider would invite a lucky lady to pin a flower on it as a victory blessing. The lucky lady was usually Mary. As for the flower she chose, it was the cornflower. 
the cornflower, which symbolizes a happy encounter, soon became ironclad evidence used by the people to slander her and the writer of an impure relationship. But they seem to have forgotten that the horse went berserk and caused a trampling incident later on. The white steed of death was once known as Cyanus. It was a symbol of love that Manus had gifted to Mary. And they forgot that the cornflower had always been the crest of Mary's family, just like the one on your tie. If what you said is true, is it wrong that I've come here to pay my respects to a late relative of mine? Oh. So Manus buried Mary here. Someone offered a high price for the location of Mary's grave back then. To pay homage to a beautiful lady who died unjustly. Yet their search came up empty. Later on, some rumors surfaced about Manus going mad and taking her remains with him. <laughs> they don't seek to pay homage to her. All they want is that gem. Aren't you the same? I'm not interested in that cursed thing. Hmm. What a pity. You may have heard that besides being a novelist, I'm also a detective. And finding things just happens to be what detectives are good at. I even plan to help out a little. In exchange for some things. <laughs> In exchange for what? Deal. So, where should we start? After Mary passed away, my family sent multiple letters to Manus asking for the dowry to be returned especially Blue Hope. But Manus never wrote back, until the day he went missing and someone brought a letter from him to Mary's father. She rests eternally at her beloved place and with her beloved. Mary loved three things from childhood, praise, jewelry, and horses. This is the only place I can think of where all three meet. After the incident, Manus killed Cyanus to appease the people's anger. So, you think he buried Mary with Cyanus? Along with Mary's favorite gem? I don't know. That's as far as I can get. We can start by searching for Cyanus' burial spot. The substance secreted by rotting remains sometimes changes the pH value of the ground and it takes a long time to restore balance. Perhaps we can try to search for anything unusual at places where a horse may be buried, like the stables, for example. Mr. Orpheus seemed to be giving me a hint. Cornflower. Remains. Beloved place. It's not at the stables. I think I know where Mary and Cyanus are buried. The hill among the three that is only covered in withered grass. 
Maybe I can locate the necklace before they do. Say, you're really sharp, Mr. Kreberg. You have the makings of a detective. Oh no, someone's coming. <laughs> you have an analytical mind, Mr. Orpheus. But being too brilliant may not always be a good thing. <laughs> Looks like someone beat us to it. Oh? Isn't it you and your companion who beat me to it? Mr. Orpheus? Show yourself. If I'm not wrong, it's you, Miss Journalist. Bring that box over and put it down on the ground here. Get over there. Turn around and don't look back until you hear a gunshot. Otherwise, it will be the last thing you hear. It's in our best interest to listen to him. There are calluses on his palm, so he should be good with a gun. Mr. Orpheus, don't you think it's strange? Mary's coffin isn't here, so where did Manus take her? That depends on what Mary loves more than horses, jewelry, and praise. Hmm. What was that? Maybe we should leave this place first. The gate seems to be controlled by this keypad. Now it all makes sense. I saw quite a few cipher machines around the race course. They must be something the master of the manor prepared for the game in the afternoon. Have you found a way to decode them? I think I have an idea. And it may be worth a try. We should start with the largest machine at the center of the race course. to be the same cipher machine mentioned in those diaries. It looks like a cipher machine that must be decoded with a key, but I don't know what the key is. I think I know.
What's wrong? I'm all right. It's just that I'm not used to the sound. Why don't you look for the other cipher machines? And we'll meet back here. You can leave the decoding to me. with this noise again and why are they amplified today I think I know how to decode them. I found five other cipher machines. Then now... Who... Is that? Who is... Alice. 
I'm happy to see you awake. Mrs. Plinius said you fainted in the greenhouse. Fortunately, Mr. Orpheus was there. I've sent for the doctor in the city, but the storm last night destroyed the roads, so they can't return for now. But Mr. Orpheus is knowledgeable about medicine, and according to his preliminary diagnosis, you seem to be fine. I've instructed the kitchen to prepare some liquid food for you, and I'll go get it immediately. Thank you. May I know how I got back here? I found you unconscious at the racecourse's entrance. Perhaps you fainted from fear or shock? I carried you back here. I ran into Mrs. Plinius at the gate. I was forced to ask for Mrs. Plinius's help to prevent the others in the manor from learning that we took action on our own. Where's Mr. Kreberg? Did he come back here? I'm not sure. No one has seen him. Mrs. Plinius, the servants, none of them have seen him. It depends on whether the servants are telling the truth. In fact, I've been in the greenhouse all day. So I don't know if anyone has gone in or out of the main building. He ran away? I've been to his room. And all his belongings were still there. If that gem was his objective, then he has achieved it. Perhaps he felt it would be too risky to return and get his belongings? When I said all, I meant the gem as well. <sighs> That's so unusual. So I have reason to believe that he may be watching in secret. I've told Mrs. Plinius about the incident at the racecourse, and it seems the situation here is more dire than I ever imagined. Although I know there's no such thing as a free meal, I don't want to suffer an accident before the banquet even begins. Obviously, we must be wary of the elusive Mr. Kreberg right now. So in my opinion, it's always better to have more allies. I agree. Then perhaps we should be more honest with each other, for the sake of our temporary alliance? For example, building trust by starting with the reason we're here? This manor's reputation isn't the best. I'm sure some materials and a specimen are not worth taking such a risk. An article isn't worth it either. I don't mind. What about you, Mrs. Plinius? I agree. Then, who will go first? In order to show my sincerity, I will go first. My presence here is linked to my husband's death. As reported by the papers, his cause of death was a type of rare bee venom. Although it's a rare occurrence in the field of biology, it isn't unheard of. I wasn't suspicious at first, but while sorting through my husband's belongings, I discovered that he hadn't recorded those bees in his observation notes. My husband was an extremely meticulous person, toward people and even more so toward his research. So there shouldn't have been an unrecorded species of bees in his apiary. And not too long ago, I received a bee specimen from this manor, and 
it was the exact rare bee species. He invited me to a game here. And in exchange, he would provide information on that bee species and the cause of my husband's death. Who's going next? Then I'll go ahead. I said that I was here to gather material. And it wasn't entirely a lie. But the subject of the material is me. My father owned this manor before Manus did. He was a kind and gentle man who loved art and doing charity work. Our family lived happily here, but his kindness did not receive the reward it deserved. The forest ranger we hired colluded with bandits. They killed my parents and ransacked the manor. I managed to survive by hiding in the cellar. Later on, a relative of mine placed me in a nursery and sold off the manor to Manus at a low price. As for the bandits and forest ranger that destroyed my family, they've gone missing. I've been searching for them throughout these years. But I always come up empty. This went on until not too long ago when the newer owner of the manor sent me something and claimed to possess clues on the forest ranger's whereabouts. And the clue is the game's prize. What did he give you? A piccolo. It was what the bandits used to trick the guards into opening the manor's gates back then. All right, Miss Journalist, tell us your story. Come in. Miss, I've brought you dinner. Dinner is served for everyone else as well. Please enjoy your meal on the first floor. Lisa will take care of her. Too many things have happened today. Miss needs some rest. And we can continue tomorrow. for me to finish this as soon as possible. According to my colleague in my investigation, the main character in every story written by Orpheus has links to cold cases. They're either the victim or suspect. And in the latest story, I am the character. Bandits. Piccolo. Forest Rangers. It's obvious he knows the past very well. 
and his knowledge may even surpass the police files. He knows it so well that it's suspicious. If he wasn't a participant, he must have been a survivor. According to my knowledge, the only possible living survivor of the incident is... Could it be him? But I feel like I've missed something in his story. The forest ranger we hired colluded with bandits. They killed my parents and ransacked the manor. I managed to survive by hiding in the cellar. Wait, cellar? As far as I know, the main building never had a cellar, at least not before I left. Was it just a mindless mention? Or... There's still time before dawn. I can use the stormy night to restart my investigation. Then... How did they get inside? Remember the Nightingale in the story? You're braver than her. Take her and run! And don't turn back! Where did those kids go? Don't be afraid. We'll meet again. There doesn't seem to be anything worth investigating here. Maybe I should try the living room. But Mrs. Plinius's room is right by it. It's best if I avoid alarming her. Then... There doesn't seem to be anything worth investigating here. Maybe I should try the living room. But Mrs. Plinius's room is right by it. It's best if I avoid alarming her. Then... This is the only place I haven't investigated. Wait, the flooring sounds off here. What have I missed? Wise, the air is quite clean here. Someone must have accessed this place quite frequently. This place looks like a laboratory.
There's still half of it left. I think it's some kind of regent. An emergency operating table and restraints. These restraints have been used frequently. These symbols... What do these symbols represent? This is a symbol my father designed. The mark of the muse. Maybe I can test them. Looks like a psychedelic drug. The siren song. It does look like a terrified sailor entrapped by sirens. <sighs> Is this why we experienced hallucinations at the race course? Nothing happened. The symbol and records are linked to its effects. If Siren represents terrifying hallucinations, then what does Nemosini represent? Huh? What's it doing back here? Was it him?
back here was it a nightmare good morning miss breakfast is ready please enjoy your meal in the dining room on the first floor oh and a new guest arrived today Mr. Norton Campbell, a new guest. Good morning, Mr. Campbell. <sighs> Forgive me, Mr. Butler. It must be an after effect I experienced yesterday. I don't have much of an appetite today. I'll be retiring to my room for some rest. Of course, miss. Please take care and notify a maid if you need anything. Miss, considering the state of your health and Mr. Kreberg's sudden disappearance, the Master has made some adjustments to the existing arrangements. You are free to move around the main building today, but please do not leave without permission. And let me know if you need anything. <laughs> <laughs> 